So after a great vacation in uh, Maui, we got back yesterday, and I knew before I left I needed um, new brake pads. I can hear them when you put the brakes on. You can hear them starting to grow a little bit. They're not the worst, but um, I'm going to replace them this morning. Now when I do this, I replace the pads and the rotors right away. So the total bill for the front axle was $159 from my bumper to bumper store in town. They've been really good to me. I, you know, I know you can look at different uh, brand names or whatever. And as far as the rotors and brake pads go, but these are the ones that they have in stock. And I can walk in the door, they can solve pretty well every, any problem for me on what I need. So I really like to uh, support our local businesses. A little shaky this morning, sorry about that. Uh, I don't know, old age, whatever it is. But I got my air compressor and I just loosened the lug nuts with my gun there. And I'm going to jack this up now and take the tire off um then um we'll go through i'll show you uh the old rotor and parts and uh give you a video on how to do this so this is uh step one first of all caution safety utmost okay so if you notice i've got my jack i've got my jack stand for this side and then what I do when I take the tire off is I actually lay the tire flat and slide it under the pickup truck. So if the jack would give and the jack stand would give, it's going to fall on that tire before it falls on any part of my body. Um, yes, I have known someone in the past uh, that was working on his vehicle, didn't have it properly uh, jacked up and the vehicle fell on him and they found him the next morning uh, dead. So um, utmost caution on this. It's To have this done, what I'm hearing is 600 to 800 and up for an axle. So for this axle or the two fronts, uh, it cost me 159 so that's a pretty decent money savings and you can turn around and do this yourself and you know save that money if you want to just requires you wouldn't need the creeper stand you know i'm just old i just want to lay on that in the driveway it's a relatively decent day i think it's going to be in the 30s today we still have some snow we're supposed to get some more snow tonight that's why i want to get this done while we were in Maui, the vehicle sat in the driveway, so everything kind of melted off of it, and um, I want to take advantage of that. So I'm going to try to get the two fronts done today. I don't think the backs need them yet, but uh, we'll go from there. I'm going to pop the hood and loosen up the cap on the, uh, on the where you add the brake fluid. And uh, that way, when I take the C-clamp that I have, which is laying, I think I'm going to need a bigger one. I think I got the bigger ones in the shed in town, but I'm going to try to use this one. I don't think it's going to work, and, uh, but I'm going to try to use that to push back that, uh, that piston inside that pushes the brake pads against the, against the rotor. So this is step one. So if you take a look at our brake pads, there is not much to them. They're really, really thin. They need to be replaced. So what you land up, what you do is, and I'm sorry, but I landed up, I took a bolt out of here. I took a bolt out of just right down below there. The sun is shining. I apologize. I'm having a hard time seeing the screen here. Feels good. But like I said, Right here, took that that bolt out, backed it out with my little impact wrench. They came out real easy. Those brake pads sit in these slides. These slides here come out, okay? And I'm gonna put new ones in and I'm gonna clean these spots up where these little slides sit in, all right? Because 
I want those slides to fit in there as perfect as can be. Now the next thing, there's two bolts that hold this on. They're on the back side. I'm gonna take those out, take this off, and then I can get at my, my rotor. And then I'll just uh, tap the rotor off, put the new rotor on, put the bolts back in after I get this all cleaned up. The other thing that I need to do, all right, and now, let me get that around here. The other thing I need to do is these right here, okay, right here. This is what pushes the pads into the rotor. All right, so I wanna start with this pushed in. So I'm gonna take one of those old brake uh, pads, flip it, take my C clamp, and I'm just gonna push these in as far as I can. That's why I loosened the cap up above. You don't wanna get any air in the system. There's two ways of doing this. Uh, normally I crack the bleeder and do it that way, but I've seen this other way done now where I'm gonna crack it up on top. If you get air in the line, that's not good. So I'm trying to kind of keep this, uh, from keep that from happening by just cracking it up on top. And so I'm gonna push those back because right now, if you try to put the new brake pads and the rotors and that together, of course, they're thicker and it won't fit together decent and your brake pads are gonna wear out right away, okay? Because they need that ability to slide back and forth and if they're tight to start with, um, you're gonna wear brake pads out right away. First time I did this back in high school, that's what I did. So we're gonna take it that far for you right now. So I tried to cheat it and I used a, uh, you know, I had that smaller C-clamp. Well, I had to run into town and get my bigger C-clamp out of the shed. And then it, it only took, you know, a minute to push both sides of this uh, uh, cylinder back in. And uh, I just, that's what it looks like with the C-clamp on. I've got the old brake pad that I used kind of to uh, bridge across the two, uh, two pistons. And I just uh, turned them in. So now I got plenty of room to put my new brake rotor on and to put my new brake pads on. So we're gonna do that next. Okay, took a little longer than I expected, but here's the final stage. Um, I got the new brake pads and rotor on. Um, just now, after you drive about 100 miles or so, go back and make sure you got everything tight on, on the work that you've done. Go back and retighten everything. Uh, bolts and that, you wanna make sure you don't lose a wheel or or lose part of the brake system. So it's always good to go in and snug those things back up. Um, like I said, here's, I'm gonna do the other side now, but that is what that, that brake pad looked like that I took off. There's just nothing left of it. So um, I'm gonna re, uh, I'm gonna turn the wheel a little bit. That makes it easier to get at those bolts in the back. And, you know, I had to go to a little, a little bit bigger gun. This is the first time this stuff had been off since the factory. Um, just a hint, down the road, I think what I'm gonna do is once every two years, I'm just gonna replace the brake pads before the brake pads get ground down. I think I mentioned that. And they start to rub on the rotors. At that point in time, I'll kind of take a look at the rotors. They should be relatively smooth yet. And I had plenty of rotor left. Uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not too hard on the rotors. So just a, an idea, I know it probably no one's ever talked about it. Maybe they don't do it. But for me, it would be easy just to, every two years, pop new brake pads in before it gets down to where they start making noise and before I start to have a lot of damage to the rotors, and then I'm all set and ready to go again. 
I can leave the rotors on. I don't have to take the, you know, the thing off that goes around the rotor and that. Uh, so it might be a lot easier to do it that way. Um, just going to really consider that for this next time around. This truck's got just a touch under 100,000 miles on it. It's been good to me. First maintenance on this. This is a 2.7 with the turbo on it. I like it. And uh, I get 23 miles to the gallon on the highway with it. And so it's a, been, a, been a great, great truck for me. Um, and uh, so, you know, I'm at that point where 100,000 miles. You got to start doing a little bit of general maintenance. Brake pads are definitely general maintenance. Um, and so um, just some things to consider. Like I said, I'll, I would allow, you know, a Saturday to do it. If you get done early, that's great. You can go do something else. But if it's your first time doing this stuff, um, you know, kind of allow yourself a little time. You're going to come up with a couple glitches along the way. And I just, I couldn't... I couldn't get the one brake pad, the new one, to fit in there quite. The other thing, too, is when you take the rotor off, spray WD uh, around the lug and where the rotor fits over the hub. And, you know, that makes it a lot easier. I landed up, I'll be honest, I landed up trying to uh, pound the, the rotor off. Couldn't get it to let loose. I sprayed a little WD on where uh, where it meets the the, the lugs and the, and around the hub came off easy as can be so i would do that right away when i pull the wheel let that start to soak and then you know pull the rest of it apart re and your rotor will pop should pop off easier but i think that's a good number of points for you don't be afraid to try this uh, the other thing i was going to mention is I've never had to do it before, and I probably should have cleaned up where those little tabs go go on. And when you pull the tabs off of your uh, uh, the, the brake caliper, um, make sure that you kind of take a look at how they're on there before you pull them off. And then you'll know how to put the new ones in. I always put the new ones in. I take a wire brush, I clean the area up, between the caliper and those little uh, aluminum or steel brake tabs that they send with you. Here's an old one right here, you know, and um, they send them, they come in a bag. Make sure you clean that area up real good. I use, like I said, a wire brush. I got that laying right there. I cleaned it up. I tried to have it really good and my brake, uh, my new brake pad fit in the backside really, really tight. And of course, you don't want that. That's got to be able to slide inside that tab. So, um, you know, I greased the tab up good, but I took the br the new brake pad and I just hit it with my, my grinder a touch where the little ears fit inside those tabs and gave myself a little bit more room. And now it slides real nice and easy in there. Um, so just another hint for you when you do this, and that should be all you need. Um, when you get back in too, final thing, don't forget this. Make sure you pump the brakes a few times before you head down the highway. Otherwise, the first time or so, you're going to put that brake pedal to the metal, and that is not going to be good. So just pump your brake pad or brake pedal a couple times before you head down the highway. Make sure you got full brake pedal. And with that, that concludes this project. Hit that like and subscribe button, please.